this Debaco University video, I'm going to give you the eight key steps to the scientific method. All right, you may have heard of the scientific method here um, and not sure what all the steps are. And while they may be a controlled kind of set predetermined sequence, it's just natural science inquiry. And if you follow these, it'll really help you organize your overall experiments. So to start with, you know, the scientific method, it's not just a linear form. It's, I like to think of it more as a circle here because it's a systematic process for investigating phenomena, acquiring new knowledge in, uh, or correcting and integrating previous knowledge. And the reason why I like the circle is once you get to a conclusion, while that may seem like an endpoint, usually that leads to more questions and more observations and then it kind of repeats the process again. So it's this kind of ever continuing cycle here of scientific inquiry. So the eight key steps to kind of look at, to kind of organize things, asking questions, getting background research, formulating a hypothesis, conducting an experiment, analyzing that data, drawing conclusions, reporting results, refining it, and then usually it leads to more questions and more research and kind of repeats there. Um, so let's just go through these eight key portions here. So again, first off, ask a question. Well, uh, identify a specific problem or question based on observations or even just curiosity about what you're observing. This question should be clear and focused. A lot of people think that they may have a clear question, but you really wanna make sure you're getting that question very pinpointed and something you can actually study. Uh, two is to conduct background research. And sometimes you gotta go back to the question after you do some research, because you might see that there was a different question or something else that you might generate. So you wanna gather existing information uh, to form a, a foundation for in the investigation and to basically just refine that question. So it's the best, most pinpointed question you can get. From that question, from those research, you're developing a hypothesis. And that's a testable uh, statement, basically, that's a prediction based on uh, research. So again, something you can test. That doesn't mean that you're always going to disprove the hypothesis. Uh, there's just something that you're going to be testing to see. Does the fertilizer make the plants grow better? Just as an example. And then design and conduct an experiment. So this could be, you know, a little more complicated. This is where most people think science uh, only exists uh, in the experimentation phase. But as you can see, there's those three key steps leading up to that. Plan a uh, controlled experiment, defining the variables, the independent, uh, dependent controls and procedures you're going to utilize, then perform the experiment, collect accurate data. Now I mentioned those independent and dependent variables. Independent variable the one that you, the scientist, will manipulate uh, to con uh, or control to test the effect of. This is the cause or the cause and effect relationship. The amount of time before a test, for example, would be an independent variable. The dependent variable would be a variable you measure or test affected by the independent variable. So this is essentially the test score. So the independent variable is how much time I give you from now until the test. The dependent variable would be your actual test score. Now the controls would be the study materials I give you, the videos here, um, and things like that would be the things that we keep constant as we compare one unit to another. And maybe I could see if I give you more time or less time, how that impacts your test score. We can also look here at the uh, fertilizer amount. So for testing uh, plant growth rate, you know, if we're going to measure how big are the plants going to grow, well, that's our dependent variable, that's what we're measuring. The independent variable would be the one that we manipulate, that would be the amount of fertilizer, or it could even be the amount of water. And the controls would be, we want to make sure all the plants being studied with the different fertilizer or different water amounts are grown in the same environment. We don't want some getting more sun or less sun, some getting warmer temperatures or colder temperatures. We want to keep all those variables consistent so we can really uh, determine whether the amount of water or the fertilizer really does make uh, an impact on the plant growth. And then that's where we go through and analyze that data, you know, using graphs, statistics, other tools to interpret, identify trends, um, all things like that. And that could be very large data sets. It can even be done with very small data sets as well. And then we draw conclusions, determine the hypothesis is supported or refuted, considering the results and also the limitations. So again, as I said, we always don't prove or disprove the hypothesis. We just have that question. Yes, it does make a difference, or maybe no, it doesn't. And then we go through and report those results. So we share the findings to reports, presentations, uh, to review or to replicate and to spread the knowledge on to others. And then lastly, we kind of refine this. So revisit earlier steps based on the findings, refine the question, hypothesis, experiment, go through this, 
process again and maybe see something uh, through the data and the data collection process we didn't see originally, make a new question, do some more background research, and repeat the process. And that's what can sometimes make science a little frustrating, but it can also make it an enjoyable process as you're constantly developing questions, hopefully getting results, directing new research, and continuing the pattern.